because he knows our name. He's able. Do y'all really know he's able up in here? That's right. That's right. He's able to bring us out of any circumstance, any situation, anything that would make us make us just give up.
And the problem is that our people are voluntarily getting in Hasatan's call Come and on. thinking that where he take them is where they're supposed to go. See? See. So today, we're going to begin the celebration of Shabbat, the Feast of Weeks. We give all glory. First off, Kala Hala, Abba Hayyub Hashem Yeshai, and Precious Ruach. And for those of you not familiar with the Hebrew, that is all praise unto the Most High in the name of Christ as well as the Holy Spirit. We give honor to Maury and Prophetess Douglas here today. Let's give them a round of applause. We thank the Most High for another opportunity to be back with the family. I don't really, really consider myself away from home. I'm just, it's just my vacation home, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, you home. You home, baby. You home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. I'm with the family. With 70 hours, I'm just with the family. I'm just with the family. With it's the not, family. Even, it's not family. even another thing. It's just, it's, <laughs> I just, I mean, my Greensboro home. I'm in our home right now. That's right. Um, shouts out uh, to the Better Day Assembly. Y'all stand up with her today. Better Day Travel with us today. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see how the most I was blessing us? I see. You see how a couple years ago when we used to come, we used to just beat me and D. You <laughs> Nah, now the most I was blessing us. Shouts out to the rest of the Better Day Assembly watching via social media. Man, I tell you, shouts out to the whole Seven Day family. Shouts out to the whole Seven Part Assembly. Yes. We can have a shine light. Restoration Center. The whole Seven Part family. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing that the Most High has given us here in Old North Carolina. Come on. <laughs> and you know what probably I was thinking, you know, it all started with Seven Day Harvest. Yeah. Wow. You know, you know, they say you're supposed to give your flowers while you're living. And I think sometimes the humble people don't say it, but I can, I might as well say it. We can say it for you. The, 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 the vision that you and the pastor have walked out has birthed so much growth as far as the Hebrews and the Israelites in, in, in here in North Carolina that it's really, un, it's really, you can't even really calculate what it's came from that first conference, that initial conference that y'all did when y'all brought the whole country into North Carolina. <laughs> the whole entire country, I'm talking about Cali, Florida, Philly, New York, I'm talking about all over the country, came in to the Red Line Inn about three or four years ago, something around there. And from that is what we have now. This is why we have this whole set of artists. Yeah. 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 Because of the vision that we gave y'all. Not a bunch of money, not a bunch of support, just trusting the most high. Yeah. And we thank the most high for what y'all have done, for what you're doing, and what the, what the most high will continue to do um, through this ministry. Hallelujah. Yeah. We thank the most high for, the, like I said, for the Seven Day family, a very uh, uh, loyal, hard working family. Whatever needs to be done, y'all get it done. I just salute you guys today for what you're doing. I, I wanted to make sure I said that today because quite often, and it's true, uh, we don't take a, a, a time enough to celebrate each other in the manner that we should. When we was in the Christian church, we find every reason to celebrate. Every past the aid program you can think of was having one every two or three weeks. And um, as we came into the truth, because of we saw the falsehoods, you understand, and the, and the, I would say, the abuse that came along with celebrating leaders and taking care of leaders, people tried to leave that behind as if it was something wrong. You understand? And it wasn't never wrong, it just was done wrong. So I want to make sure I bring that out because there's a particular part of Shabbat that we're going to go into today that I need you guys to know that it ain't an option. <laughs> you understand? I want to make sure that's clear. It's a commandment. And if you're law keepers, this is something that you need to do for your leader. We're not a leader here. We're just a teacher today. Huh? So, um, Amongst those that are with us today, how many of y'all, this is your first Feast of Weeks? Your first of all. All right. We just went in. 
<laughs> and, um, and I know our uh, problem is that y'all have a lot of uh, uh, Christian brothers and sisters watch via social media. Um, so because of that, we're going to do this teaching a little different than we normally do. We're going to start from the ground and we're going to work our way up so that there is an understanding of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Yeah. It's quite too often we, we do things that we don't even know why we're doing it. And yeah, there's no blessing in just throwing something against the wall and hoping it stick. So I hope you guys brought your pins and pads. Um, we're going to go into these things. We're going to break this thing down. And I promise you, what you're going to see here today is, is that this speech day is a whole lot more important than we've been giving it, we've been giving it glory for. Now, when you was in the church, I know many of you heard of what they call the day of Pentecost. What I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that what the Christian church was calling the day of Pentecost and what this is, is not the same. They just took a word out of the Bible and made it into a church program. This is not the day of Pentecost because pity only means 50. So I want you to keep that in mind as we go through this, okay? This is very important. So before, before we get into the actual meat of talking about the Feast of Weeks, the, 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 the Feast of Shabbat, I need to address for those who this is your first time or those who may be watching via social media, who may believe that what I was doing in the Christian church is equivalent to what I'm doing over here. Meaning, if I celebrate Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, there's no difference to you celebrating Passover, Feast of Weeks, Tabernacle. And that is a lie straight from the pistol there. We need to make that clear today. And because I, I want to make sure we do that today, is because unfortunately, Israelites who know they're Israelites are still dragging their feet, prophets, when it comes into the feast days. They're treating it as if it's an option. Well, we never treated Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter as if it was an option. No, we didn't. <laughs> we never treated it as an option. Even though we couldn't find it in the Bible, we treated it as if it was law. But when we come and see things in the law, we act as if it's an option. Well, I would have came, but I already had some of things going on. Oh, yeah. Let me put this out here as well. Seven Day Harvest operates um, in many ways like Better Day does, because we said, apart, that's what we do. We're just the same church, different name. <laughs> really good, different. That's right. So, what happens oftentimes is when the feast days come, we open it up to everyone to come. So, I wanted to put this out here. For those who watch on social media, those who may be here today, somebody may have invited you or whatever the case may be. When an Israelite comes to you and invites you to a feast day, this is not equivalent when a Christian comes and invites you to a church program. Okay? This is when they say, yo, we got a feast day coming, you just can't say, uh, I'll make it if I want to. This is a commandment. There's a difference between a commandment and an invitation. So I wanted to put that out there because what I find out a lot when we're trying to bring our brothers into the truth to understand, they're like, yeah, I, I do, I do believe. Do Romans 28, yeah, we Israel. But when you try to start getting them to transition to the feast days, they treat it as this is an option. I want to make sure you guys know that this is a commandment. And this is very important. If you're not going to keep feast days, you might as well eat pork and go to church on Sunday. Straight up. Straight up. All right. So let, let's deal with that first. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. I need you to hold that. Go to 1 Corinthians 10. I need you to hold that and get Ecclesiastes 8. So we're gonna set a quick foundation um, showing that what the Gentiles do, because all of the holidays that are connected with Christianity are from the Gentiles. They're not from the Bible. They're not from Israel. None of them are connected to the, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I need you guys to understand. Now, because we don't wanna make this lesson long, I do have a lesson that breaks this down deeper. So if anybody wants it afterwards, 
Um, just let me know when I send it to you. Because what Christians do, they go to Colossians the second chapter and say that Paul said it's okay because you can't judge a man for a Sabbath day or for a holy day. I'm sorry. Do you know what the Bible means for judge? When they was judging in the Bible, it wasn't a point in the finger to have a conversation. That guy had a stone in his hand, and he was going to stone you to death. That's what judgment was at that time. They didn't talk about you. You got stoned to death and kicked off the side of the mountain. <laughs> so when you see the word judge in the Bible, you can't look at it as what a new term of Christianity saying, oh, you're judging me. You didn't want to be judged back then. You didn't survive that meeting. <laughs> okay. You didn't leave that meeting if you got judged. You was off the side of the mountain. Okay. Just wanted to put that out. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. I need you to hold that and get uh, the Ecclesiastes 8. 1 Corinthians 10, let's start at verse 1. Feast of Weeks. Let's go. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now, so Paul's bringing out here, he's talking about our ancestors as they came out of Egypt. What was that last part, David? How all, our, were, all of our fathers were under the cloud. So you know when during the daytime, the Most High gave us a cloud by day, and he gave our ancestors what a fire by night, and then he said they all what passed through the sea, that red sea, when he split the sea, that's what was coming out, go ahead. And all, and were all baptized unto Moses. And I was what? Baptized unto Moses uh -huh. in the cloud and in the sea. Now, I want you to remember this. Because you have Israelites out here today saying that baptism is like taking a bath. No, it's not. Even though Matthew 28, Hamashah says, go and go and do it all nations and baptize. Even though they were baptizing all throughout the Bible, even though Paul and the disciples was all and the, and the apostles were baptizing, they'll tell you that you don't have to be baptized. When I go to clearly to Hebrews 6, and it tells me that I have to be baptized to get into the kingdom. So we see here that even our ancestors were baptized, they were seen as a symbolic baptism as they passed through the Red Sea. Because when they went into Egypt, ladies and gentlemen, they were not a nation. It was not until they came out of Egypt that they became Israel. Right. And they were baptized going through the sea. Now, through Yeshaya, in order to get into the kingdom, you have to be what? Baptized. baptized. So what, how we became a nation is how we become the remnant. Mm. This is why Malachi 3, 6 says that the Most High, he never changes. This whole idea that Yah is different now? No, people are different. <laughs> Yah has never changed. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Now, verse 3. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? Uh huh. And did all drink the same Now, that's, that's spiritual meat. We know, of course, that's the manna that came out of the sky. Go ahead. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Uh huh. But they drank of the spiritual rock. That rock that follows them, and that rock was Hamashiach. And that rock was who? Hamashiach. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a, a common belief amongst our people that they will, you've heard people say that they were thankful that we came here in America in slave ships because they said without us coming here, we would never know who Jesus was. Sure. And in actuality, that's right. It makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. We would never know who white Jesus was if we became in slave ships. That's right. That's right. Just want to put that out there. Yes, but Yeshia, Yahushua, we knew him since we came out of Egypt. That's right. He's always been with us. He was the friend that was going back and forth talking to Abraham. That's why when Yeshia was talking to the, to, to the Pharisees, he said, Before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> he was always there. So we didn't get put on to Hamashiach through Christianity. We got put on to white Jesus through Christianity. <laughs> That's a total difference. It is. All right, just wanted to put that out there. Now, for the sake of time, go down to verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, 
Flee from idolatry. The majority of the people in this world, if you ask them, are they in idolatry? Are they are they uh, idolaters? They'll say no. Let's see what idolatry is. Hold your place there and go to Psalms 96. Remember, I said that all of the holidays, the so-called holidays that are connected to the religion of Christianity, come from where? The Gentiles. Okay. So Paul breaks this down here. So this is why I find it amusing when people say that Paul said it's okay to celebrate on holidays. I've never known Paul to contradict himself. Psalms 96, verse 1. Watch this. Sing unto the Most High of your song. Uh -huh. Sing unto the Most High of the earth. Mm -hmm. Sing unto the Most High. Bless his name. Bless his who? Bless his name. And his name is Ahia. Go ahead. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Right. Declare his glory among the heathen. So, ladies and gentlemen, the Israelites' job was to declare the Most High's glory to them. Now look at the world now. We are going to the Gentiles to learn about him. That's backwards. Yes, it is. That's like prophet is going to her children telling her to put her on. I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. That's like you going to the babies right now and put us on, drive us around, cook us the food. <laughs> No, it's not going to happen. The world, look at the shape of the world. This is a result of the Gentiles being in charge. Yep. But the Gentiles got in charge because when we were in charge, we took it for granted. Yes, we did. Come? Yes, we did. Just wanted to put that out. Verse 3. Declare his glory among the heathen, uh -huh. his wonders among all people. Right. For the Most High is great and greatly to be praised. Uh -huh. He is to be feared above all God. He is to be what? He is to be feared above all God. So when you talk to the Christians and they say, there's only one God. But what's that the Bible says? He is to be feared above all gods. So why would the Bible say that the Most High is to be feared above all gods if there wasn't other gods? This is why you need to know his name. This is why you need to know his attributes. This is why you need to know what he says and, and commands because if you don't, you can be inadvertently and involuntarily serving another god. So he said he's to be feared above all gods. Go ahead. For all the gods of the nations are idols. For all the gods of what? All the gods of the nations are idols. So he says, the Bible says, that the gods of the Gentiles are idols. Y'all seeing this? So that means, ladies and gentlemen, at any point in time, if you're celebrating a holiday, you're involved with a ritual or tradition that's connected to the gods of the Gentiles, you're in idolatry. If you go into your house and you put up a Christmas tree, when Jeremiah 10 tells you not to do that, when we know that the Christmas tree represents Nimrod and not the Most High, you can't say that it has anything to do with Hamashiach. That's idolatry. Are y'all seeing this? So, with the Bible telling us here that the, that, the, that the gods of the nations of idols, now go back to 1 Corinthians 14. Do you, 1 Corinthians 10, slightly, verse 14. Now are you starting to see, ladies and gentlemen, why the, the Christian um, authority works so hard to keep you out of the Old Testament? This is why they tell us all the time, you know, this is done away with, you don't got to worry about that. Because if I'm just reading 1 Corinthians 10 and 14, not knowing what Psalms 96 says, then I'm not just going to assume, hey, that ain't me. I'm not an idolatrous. I serve the Lord. Not even realizing that my Sunday service is serving an idol. 
My holidays are serving idols. The food that I eat is serving idols. These are not opinions. This is the Bible. Come on. First Corinthians 10, verse 14. I thought y'all would be a whole lot more excited about this. I think this is maybe personal, then, D. Hey, yo, Stu, make sure you crack the door, man. We might have to run up out of here, man. Sorry, I've been in some hostile environments. I know how to work. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and get my keys out. I know how this works. I got your back, sir. I know how this works. I'm going to get the keys out. <laughs> First Corinthians 10, verse 14. Watch this. Work for my dearly beloved. Flee from my dollars. So now Paul is telling me to flee from idolatry. Now I know what he's talking about now. Okay. It's clear now. He says flee from idolatry. But he's gonna make it, he's gonna break it down even more. Verse 15. I speak as to wise men, judging what I say. Mm -hmm. The cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Hamashiach? So, you, so he's standing here and saying, listen, when we drink that wine, when we take communion, does it not represent the blood that Yeshua said for the remission of our sins? Yeah. That's what it's symbolic to. That's what it represents, right? right. Go ahead. The bread which we break uh -huh. is it not the communion of the body of Hamashiach. So that unleavened bread that which we eat, it represents his body that was broken for us, huh? All right, verse 17. For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Uh -huh. Behold Israel after the flesh. So he's talking about now Israel that has not received the Shia as their Hamasha. They're still doing the sacrifices. Go ahead. Are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? So when they do the sacrifices, when they burn these things up to the Most High, and the priests and the Levites will eat them, are they not eating food that is sacrificed to the most high? Mm -hmm. Not to somebody else. Nope. It's to the most high. Right? right. Verse 17. So like in verse um, 8, 19. What say I think? So he said, what am I saying then? That the idol is anything? Uh -huh. Which is offered and sacrificed to idols is anything? So he's saying, listen, if that wine that we drink is symbolic to Yeshua's blood, and that but that unleavened bread that we eat is symbolic to his body. This 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 meat that I'm blood burning up is represented to the most high. How can I say that what we're doing for the idols, which are hope, the gods of the nations, how can we say that don't matter? He said it means something. When you take that turkey and you put it on your table on Thanksgiving, you don't know that most of you don't know. That those are sacrifices to Ceres, C E R E S, the agriculture god of Esau, of the Europeans. That's where you get the word cereal for. So you don't know that when they slaughtered the so called Native Americans, that they came back and did these sacrifices to Ceres. Thanking Ceres for the victory. So you're taking the turkey, putting it on your table. You're taking the cranberry sauce, which represents the blood that was shed in there. You're taking all of that and not even knowing, sitting on your table talking about it for the most high, but it's for Ceres. That's the agricultural God of the Europe, of, the, of Esau. C E R E S. That's why you gotta understand, ladies and gentlemen. These guys are playing chess, but we're playing the checkers. They know who their gods are. They got the same gods that they had since the Tower of Babel. They've never changed. That's why when you were in Jeremiah, the most high asked, he said, What kind of a nation changed gods? Because Israel is the only one. <laughs> We're the only one that changed our God. I know this is crazy. Like, yo, what does this got to do with the Feast of Weeks? You're going to understand it in a minute. I need you to understand that if your hand is anywhere back, anywhere in the past, you're in idolatry. And Paul says, what? Verse 20? But I say, 
that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to them. They sacrifice to who? They sacrifice to them. They sacrifice to who? To devils. To devils. And not who? And not to Yahweh. Not to God. So if you're doing any other holiday, you're sacrificing to who? They sacrifice to devils. That's the Bible saying that. That's not the vendor. That's not Israelites. The Bible, ladies and gentlemen, that you say you believe in is telling you that if you're doing anything to another God, you're sacrificing to who? Yep. Sacrifice to devils. Devils. Go ahead. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the most high and the cup of devils. You can't do both. This is Paul telling you this. So if anybody come and tell you that Paul said it's okay to celebrate Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving, you tell me you show them this. And just a quick, quick explanation for what Paul was saying in Colossians, the second chapter was, remember, I think it's around verse 11, when he says that the, the ordinances that were against us were nailed to the cross. Well, what was nailed to the cross? What, what ordinances was against us in the law? Was it the law itself? Or the fact that if you broke the law, you died. <laughs> Not the law, but the fact that if you broke the law, right. you died. That's right. So when you go into Numbers 28 and Numbers 49, you find listed every sacrifice that they had to do for the new moons, for the Shabbats, and for the holy days. Okay? Amasha um, says in Matthew 5 and 17, what? Think not that I come to destroy the law. All the prophets, I came to do what? Fulfill. What aspect of the law did he fulfill? The sacrificial law. Because his blood was shed as the one time sacrifice. Now there's no need for me to kill the heifer, the lamb, the bullock. That's the part of the law that's done away with. What Paul was telling them in Colossians was, you had Israelites, which he's addressing here, that were still doing the sacrifices, coming to those guys who had received Hamashiach and saying, why are y'all not doing these sacrifices? That's why he said, let no man judge you for holy day, new moon, Shabbat, or offering, because of what Hamashiach fulfilled by becoming the blood sacrifice. Huh? That doesn't mean now I can go and serve the devil and then it's okay. Now, read that verse 21. You cannot drink of the cup of the Most High and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Most High's table and the table of devils. Can't do both. Now, Go to uh, Sirach 34 and Job 14. I need to put this out here for those who say, hey, we know Christmas and Easter is pagan, but we sanctify it. Still looking for that verse. If anybody got it, don't let me see it. Let's just go ahead and burn the book. <laughs> Been give us a mess. Unintentional. Won't you fall? What'd you say? You Gonna go to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, Salaki, and you see your pocket with Sirach, chapter 34, and Job 14. I need to put this out here for anyone who's saying that I can sanctify in my own mind and it be what I want to do because you hear me. You know that's what it do. You know, I mean, we all did this, so I can't say them. I gotta say we. You remember Providence when we got a little woke and we went from saying Easter Sunday to Resurrection Sunday? Absolutely. <laughs> we wouldn't say Easter no more. We started saying, oh, it's Resurrection Sunday. Right. But then I found out he didn't resurrect on Sunday. No more. That was a lie, too. That was a lie, too. Yeah. So. 
It all comes in stages. So my Christian brothers and sisters, those that may be here today, and going to say this, I don't, like we, we tell it all the time, and I want to remind you, don't take these things as personal attacks. I ain't telling you something that I ain't already done. I was a Baptist pastor. I done taught this stuff backwards and frontwards. Lived it. Okay? I tell people this story all the time. When my pastor first gave me the first opportunity to preach a sunrise service, I cried. I literally broke down. I thought it was the greatest honor of all time. That he would entrust me with a sunrise service. You understand? Absolutely. So don't act like we try, don't think that this is we looking on looking on standing on the hill looking down at you. No, we stand on the hill with our arms out, bring, trying to bring you up. That's right. You understand? That's good. Job 14, verse 1. A sloppy verse. Job 14. Verse 4. Sloppy. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? Not one. So if I know the Bible tells me that Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, Sunday service, Fourth of July, anything that's related to the Gentiles is an unclean thing. Can I say I'm sanctified? And I threw that Fourth of July in there on purpose, and I saw the side eyes they, they came with me. because I know a lot of you going to want to be Israelites on every other day of the year, except for the Fourth of July. <laughs> I gotta have it. Come on, man. Let me remind you what you was doing in 1776. And remind you what you were doing in 1876, 1976, today. <laughs> You're in captivity. What declaration of independence are you celebrating? Come on with that. There you go. Proverbs 3 and 31 says, If he not die oppressor and choose none of his ways, you can't come and say that the government is oppressing me and then wave with the flag on the wall with your life. Really? <laughs> well, oh, man, that's the only day I got off, man. You know, I got the time off. Okay. Do it on the second. Man, it just ain't the same. The hamburger don't taste practice on the one before, bro. Right? It's <laughs> 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 so Rock 34. Verse. Of an unclean thing. Of an unclean thing. What can be clean? What can be cleansed? And from that thing which is false. Uh huh. What truth can come? So that thing that's false. What truth can come from it? This is the Bible. Come. Huh? Lastly, Ecclesiastes eight. We're gonna get into Shabbat. For those that are watching, I want to give this to you, and I want to give this to my brothers and sisters who are continuously trying to minister to your family members, friends, co-workers, and you're finding um, that they don't want to listen to you. Let me start by reminding you of you. That's what we gotta start with. That's who you know best. Right. Because you know, ladies and gentlemen, that none of us were in the truth all our lives. We all have a story and testimony where someone came to us and tried to share this with us, and we know what our initial reaction was. And the process that it took for us to get to where we were to where we are today. So you're gonna to have to be a lot patient. But you're also gonna to have to recognize too that two thirds are not gonna make it. It's a very unfortunate thing. But a majority of our people in this country are not going to survive. 
They're copying the witchcraft that they see on television. CNN is their god. And Dr. Fauci is their prophet. <laughs> Bill Gates is their apostle. That's right. That's right. That's it. And uh, Uncle Joe is the Pope. Yep. Wow. That's it. My, my, my. my, my, my. It just, it's, it's as simple as that. Yep. And Obama you got it. So Obama's the bishop. So straight up, <laughs> he's the bishop that you better not say nothing about. Yep. I don't care how wicked and dirty he is. You say something about him, you you wrong. That's why. That's it. Okay. So you got to understand, you know, and we tell I tell better day this all the time. Be very careful with your conversation that you have. That's why. You know. That's why. Be careful. That's another lesson for another time. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 8, verse uh, 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set them to do evil. So what happens, ladies and gentlemen, now because we are under grace, and there's no immediate response to the paganism and the wickedness that these religions are teaching us. You're not gonna have people change overnight. Now, if the most high sit fire and brimstones on a Christmas party, Christmas will be over overnight. But he's not gonna do that now. So I'm telling you right now, ladies and read that woman deep again, deep. He says, what? Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Uh -huh. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. It's fully set in them to do evil. Because they're not seeing any immediate response. Even though Israelites, who eyes are open, we see the immediate response. We see the death and decoration of our, decoration of our people every night on TV. We know that is a result of breaking off statute of commandments. Yeah. They just don't know that. So they, they think that their problem is racism. You ask the average person, what's the problem? What's what's going on? Racism, racism. White supremacy. Nope. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, don't tell me you against white supremacy and you're a Christian. You can't be both. Christianity, white supremacy is the root, is the fruit of Christianity. Without Christianity, there is no white supremacy. You take down white Jesus, white David, white Moses, you don't have the Jewish people, or you don't have white supremacy. All that's over, done overnight. So you can't be both. You can't go and say you're against white supremacy and you go to church with white images upon your stained glass pews. Praying to a white God, following a white a white taskmaster, apostle, and bishops, and saying you against no, you can't be both. You're fueling this white supremacy if you are in the religion of Christianity. Simple as that. Now, I know that's a tough pill to swallow, but as the old folks say, it's tight, but it's right. I know that's right. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I was going to go somewhere else with that, but I can't do that. Let's go. All right, let's go to um, Jubilee 6. She had a lot of passion in it when she said that. She done heard it a couple of times before. All right, so let's go to Jubilee 6, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into the Feast of Weeks. You're going to be surprised to learn here today, ladies and gentlemen, that this feast day that you're celebrating today and tomorrow was established with our people long before the law statute of Mass. And it has so much more of a deeper meaning than we ever could imagine. And you're also going to discover today two very essential things that happen on the Feast of Weeks. We're going to break this thing down so you're going to understand why. And I promise you that if you go through this with us today, you're going to have a level of excitement that you're never going to imagine when this day comes around next year. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to really explode. All right? So let's go to the Book of Jubilees. Chapter 6, and let's go to verse 15. Uh, 
And he gave to Noah and his sons a sign that there should not again be a flood on the earth. Mm -hmm. He set his bow in the cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that should not again be a flood on the earth to destroy all the days of the earth. And we know that the rainbow is what he's speaking of here. Is the eternal sign of the covenant that he set with Noah and his sons that he would never destroy the earth again with a flood. Watch this, verse 17. For this reason, it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets, tables, that they should celebrate the Feast of Weeks in this month once a year to renew the covenant every year. Wow. So do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that the Feast of Weeks was started by the Most High with Noah to renew the covenant of not destroying the earth with the flood ever again. That's big. Now, that's right, Bishop. And this is the thing about it that's important. Number one, the alphabet boys <laughs> who operate in complete abomination don't think that it was a coincidence that they chose this symbol to represent their organization. Because who was responsible for the flood in the first place? Satan and his fallen angels. As he began to come down and go into the daughters of men, and they began to make giants, and their sons made demons in Nephilim. Yep. And they took away the original form of creation and took those who had the Nephilim seeded. Most High had to destroy the, the earth because of the wickedness that came. The rainbow was set as a symbol to say that, okay, now going forth, stay with me. And the Feast of Weeks in which we're celebrating today was established to renew that covenant. Why the Christian church never told us this? Yet bringing in the alphabet boys to sing on the choir. Some of them are pastors. Some of them even go to the rallies down there with them in the church. But they won't stand with you if you say you're in the flood. Do you recognize, ladies and gentlemen, that we live in a society today that immediately tomorrow I can go and take my, my rag off, put on me a scarf, take my fringes off and put on me a nice gown, change my name, and I don't have to cut my beard, I can just change my name and say I'm a woman now and I will be recognized. But if I go and tell them on the earth like, you have a problem with me, D. I'm anti-Semitic. First of all, who is Semitic people? I know Shem. But I don't know Sim. You, you know Sim? <laughs> Start with that. Secondly, I can't be anti Semitic when I'm from the line of Shem. Right. Okay? It's impossible. So the Feast of Weeks, ladies and gentlemen, was created, established by the Most High in order to renew the covenant of the rainbow every year. Watch this, it gets deeper. Verse 18. And this whole festival was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation. Read that again. And this whole festival was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation. The Feast of Weeks was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation. Do y'all see that? I mean, am I the only one that's excited about that? So ladies and gentlemen, when you go to Genesis 1 and 1, <laughs> you know at that point in heaven, the most high of the angels was keeping the Feast of Weeks. In heaven. I can tell you what they ain't doing in heaven. Christmas ain't done in heaven. Thanksgiving ain't been done in heaven. 
Easter ain't been done in heaven. But the Feast of Weeks is. It's being done in heaven. From when? From the day of creation to the days of Noah. Uh -huh. 26 jubilees and five weeks of years. Right. And Noah and his sons observed it for seven jubilees and one week of years to the day of Noah's death. Right. From the day of Noah's death, his sons did away with So when Noah died, you know how black folks are, you know how we is. Old folk died, we act like we forget what the old folks taught us. That's right. And then somebody has to come back along and reestablish what we were doing the whole time. And that man was who? Until the days of Abraham. Until the days of who? Abraham. Abraham. And they ate blood. But Abraham observed it. And Isaac and Jacob and his children observed it up until thy days. And in thy days, the children of Israel. Hold on, stop right there, David. Now, Christianity tells you that they served the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's right. And you're reading here that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob celebrating the Feast of Weeks. Why are they in Christianity? And let you know that Christianity was never celebrating the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was never celebrated. So Abraham kept the Feast of Weeks. Isaac kept the Feast of Weeks. Jacob kept the feast of weeks. But then what happened? Over to thy days, and in thy days the children of Israel forgot it until he celebrated anew on this mountain. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. When we went into Egypt, we left the feast of weeks back. But do you realize what's going on right here? Let me pause. Before the day, how many of you have ever heard, heard of the Book of Jubilees? By show of hands. When did Moses receive the Book of Jubilees? On the mountain, when? When he did what? Somebody just said it. When he received the law. So ladies and gentlemen, the Feast of Weeks was reestablished with Israel the day they received the law. Right. Yes, <laughs> I don't think they hear it. <laughs> you think it's a coincidence that the day that we came on Exodus the 20th chapter, when the Most High came to the mountain himself and gave the law, that was the Feast of Weeks. And you know, when you go to Exodus 24, Moses goes back up the mountain. Spends how long with him? 40 days. And that was the Feast of Weeks. The same day he received the Jubilee Book of Jubilees. Read that again. In the days that the children of Israel forgot it, forgot it until you celebrate a new on this mountain. A new on this mountain. A new. <laughs> So we see here, ladies and gentlemen, that on the Feast of Weeks, the Most High gave the law. <laughs> I think that makes it quite important, don't it, Bishop? What did he give out on Christmas? Now, watch this, verse 20. And do thou command thy the children of Israel to observe this festival and all their generations for a commandment unto them. Right. One day in the year. One day in the year. In this month, they shall celebrate the festival. Uh-huh. For it, for it is the Feast of Weeks. For it is the Feast of Weeks. And the Feast of First Fruits. And the Feast of First Fruits. This feast is twofold and of a double nature. Uh-huh. According to what is written and engraved concerning it, celebrate. They said what? According to what is written and engraved concerning it, celebrate. Now you can you can do it if you're free. Celebrate. If you got some time. Celebrate. If it works with your schedule. Celebrate. That sounds like a command, don't it? Yeah. Celebrate. This ain't enough for discussion here. This ain't, you know, uh, I would, man, but you know, I got some I had some plans. You know. You know what I'm saying? 
the NBA playoffs they were to start. I want to check out that that that, that, that uh, play-in game. <laughs> no, ain't enough for discussion. He said, "What, be Celebrate, celebrate it, celebrate it." <laughs> what you say? Now, I could go in there more. But let's go to the biggest twenty-three. Cause I got some things, more things I gotta show y'all. Let's go to the bit of this 23. So now we know that the Feast of Weeks, that's, 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 that's review. The Feast of Weeks was started to renew the covenant of the boat, the rainbow, that he would not uh, destroy the earth uh, with the flood. But the day that it was reestablished with the children of Israel was on the day that he gave Children of Israel, the law, the Ten Commandments, on the Feast of Weeks. But I find it very interesting that it was not a coincidence that the Children of Israel was at that mount that particular day to receive the law on the Feast of Weeks. Why? Exodus 12 chapter. You don't have to go there. I'm just going to give it to you. Exodus 12. When the Most High comes down, what did he tell them? Number one. This is the first day of your new year. 14 days later, they did what? Passover. 15 days, they did what? Feast of Unleavened Bread. What happened on that day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread? Got out of Dodge. Got out of Dodge. Took everything. All right. Seven days later, they kept the feast for seven days. So that's now day 22. I want you to remember this. Watch this. Leviticus 23, verse 1. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Hold up, now. Am I talking to the children of Israel, or am I talking to African Americans? Uh, children of Israel. Children of Israel. Okay, all right. Just want to make sure, because I was, most of them looking at me like, I don't know who I am. <laughs> Read that again. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Most High. The feast of who? The feast of the Most High. Uh -huh. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. To be a what? Holy convocation. Not prophets. You know, they, a lot of people don't know this, but you know, we, we, we did our thing. I know you get ready to go there. Before the truth. They were down there, hallelujah. And I was down there in Gassy Grove, Gary Grove down there. We used to be up in the backwoods singing all night long, long before the truth. That's how we so tight because we came from the rat to the truth together. Now, on your church programs, did you not used to see holy convocations? Yes, yes, that's it. Yeah. Now, how many of those holy convocations that have been kept can you find in here? None. None. Not one. Because really, most of those holy convocations. Want nothing but for the pastor to get the money back right. and to go out and bag up. That's, right. that's it. That's it. That's Absolutely. That's it. Let's just be real about it. That's, that's right. real. That's straight up. Yeah. Come in, they put all that burden on the members, send that money, and nine times out of ten, especially in circuit donation, the members won't even be able to go. Just the leaders. Or delegates. <laughs> Methodists. I see Hello. you said it. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> yeah. We'll say it. We'll say it for you. Delegates. Send the delegates with the bag. That's it. You don't got the bag, don't come. That's right. That's, That's right. It. That's it. And That's they it. call it a holy convocation. That's it. I call it a scheduled church program. <laughs> <laughs> That's what yes, it is. Yes, sir. Talk about revivals. How can you have a revival already wrote in and call it a revival? Those are scheduled church programs. That's right. That's right. Revivals took place. You go to a city, troop come out, and you find it there 10, 13, 14, 15 days. That's right. Ruach moving. Yes. Not every fourth Sunday in August. If it's already scheduled. <laughs> 
It's a church program. It's a church program. <laughs> say it good. Say it it's good. not a holy congregation. No, it's not. I just wanted to put that out there. Because they being we we were gassed. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. And and what is happening, ladies and gentlemen, I'm putting this out here because you gotta understand, we're attacking the system. We're only telling you something that we've already done. That's right. That's how we can talk about it. If I hadn't done it, I couldn't speak on it. That's right. But this is the problem. The members are getting beat down, worn out, to the point, and now they're blaming the Bible and they're blaming the Most High. Yeah. When they were never introduced to the Most High, right. they never knew who Hamashiach. Wow. Because the Bible says that if you're not keeping law, statutes, and commandments, you don't know him. Mm. I just wanted to put that out there. First, first holy place here. Go to first John two and four. And then we're gonna to go to first John three. We're gonna come back. I need to let y'all understand no because I want to make sure because I know prophets, y'all have a lot of Christians that watch. And I, I, I know I want you to understand that the Bible is not a lie. That's right. That who you know to be Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. There is a God that sits high, looks low, and his name is Ahia. They call him Yahuwah. He is living. He is real. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But what we learned in Christianity was a lie. Yeah, that's right. First John 2 and 4. Bring it out. He that says I know him. He that say you know him, my shot. And keep him not his commandments. And keep not his commandments. Is a liar. Is a what? Is a liar. Is a what? Is a liar. Is a liar. Yes. And the truth is not in you. I don't care how long you've been preaching, how long you've been singing on the choir. If you're not keeping the commandments, you are a what? Liar. That's the Bible calling you that. That ain't me. How do I know that? First John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin, transgressive also the law. So if you're breaking the law, I don't care how long you've been pastoring, how many churches you got, you are a sinner. Period. Read it. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Uh -huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. No, sin is transgression of the church orders. Sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the of the denomination. Sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. So don't come with that old testament stuff. This is John in the new. Said so if you're breaking the law, you are a sinner. But he also says in verse 5, what? And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. That's a masha. And in him is no sin. Because Hebrews 4 15 says that at all points he was tempted like you and I, yet he was what? Without sin. That's right. And this is the kicker, verse 6. Whosoever abideth in him. So those who are in Hamasha are not breaking the law. Mm. But those what? Whosoever said it. But those who are breaking the law have not seen have them. Not seen them. Neither, know them. Neither know them. This is the Bible. So if you are a lawbreaker, if you don't keep Sabbaths, holy days, if you're eating unclean foods, you are a sinner and you've never met the Christ of the Bible. Why Jesus is the only one who tells you that everything is okay. <laughs> Not your shy. Not your hoosha. You are a sinner. But this is the good news. First John 1 and 9. If we confess our sin, mm -hmm. he is faithful yeah. and just to forgive us. Jesus, you still need no more. Grace is still extended to you. But if you keep gashing yourself, lying to yourself, because of the numbers, Matthew 5 and 23. Matthew 7 and 23. We're going to get back, y'all. I just I need you to deal with this first. 
Because I want to make sure, listen, time is running out. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The Bible says in Amos the 8th chapter that there's going to be a famine among the land, not with food or water or gas. Word. <laughs> <laughs> the word of the most high. That's right. That's it. That's it. Yes, Probably this is like me going to the refrigerator, drinking all the water out of the bottle until there's a water shortage. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew 7 23. And then will I profess unto them. These, these are the ones, because I'm just doing it for a second time, in verse 21 to 22. He says, Well, we done marvelous works in your name. We cast out demons. We did all of this. But he's going to tell those same people what? I don't know. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Who? Depart from me, ye that work of the ye that break my father's law. Wow. He said, I never knew you. I didn't want to hear that. And I know you don't want to hear it either. Nope, show don't. Huh? Now let's go back to the Vegas 23. The Vegas 23, verse 1. And the most heart spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. and say unto them concerning the feast of the most high, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. These are my feasts. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. Ladies and gentlemen, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is a holy convocation. It's not up for a choice. It's not an option. Every Sabbath is a holy convocation. Not Sunday. You don't get the choice to say, well, this is the day that we decided to worship. Who is we? And black folks, y'all need to understand you ain't made no decision anyway. You gash yourself. The decision was made for you on the plantation. That's right. Sure was. Yeah. You never made a choice. Nope. We need to stop lying to ourselves talking about we decided. You ain't decided nothing. Mm -hmm. Your decision was decided for us. Yep. The only decision that you have now is to come back to the most high. Or not. Repent or perish with the rest. Oh, Verse 4. These are the feasts of the Most High, even holy convocation, which you shall proclaim in their season. Now, for a second time, remind you, we talked about that in Exodus 12. Came in, he said, this is the start of the new year. 14 days later, Passover. So, I can only speak for us. March 6th, we celebrated the new year, new moon. Some of y'all were down there with us, down there for us. Had a good time down there that day. Right? Yeah. 14 days later, we get the what? The Passover. That's what the Bible says. The next day was the 15th day, we kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, second time, go to verse. Go to verse 15. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. So, after that, that Sabbath with the Passover, that next day on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that next Sabbath, he said, What? From the day that you brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths. You must count what? Seven Sabbaths. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Now, seven Sabbaths equals what? 49. 49 days. So from starting with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you count 49 days. Verse 16. Even unto the morrow after the seventh seven shall ye number 50 days. That's Pentecost. Penny means 50. So once you get to the 50 day, go ahead. And you shall offer a new meat offer unto the Most High. Mm -hmm. You shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves 
of ten, two ten fields, they shall be of fine flour, they shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the most high. This is the feast of weeks, the feast of fruits. Now, remember I told you initially at the beginning, there was something that we had to show you that was not an option. Hold your place here, let's go to Deuteronomy 16. So he said, count the 50 days, and then your next day, that next day is the Sabbath, is a past, is a sloppy feast of weeks. Now, something very important that is being overlooked. We talked about this in the beginning, and I mentioned it throughout, with the idea of that there was never anything wrong with providing for your leaders, taking care of your leaders. Israel as a whole, we're failing that. It's wrong. It's a shame that no good pastors are being getting money poured on and the people that are giving their lives are struggling. That's it. They, and they ain't gonna never tell you about it. Because we that operate in the truth says that he says that freedom you have received, freedom you ought to give. So we don't charge on the rings. We don't take salary from our churches, our assemblies, because we know that's against the Bible. But because people have moved away from, from what the law, the law says into Christianity, you start saying, well, I don't have to do that. This is my choice. No, it's not. The Levitical priesthood is being operated through the assemblies today through the fivefold ministry. The apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, and the evangelists. They have the same responsibilities as the Levitical priesthood. Just because the Levites were cast away doesn't mean the responsibilities of the Levites cast away. Because the priest and the prophet came into who? Amashiach and a Mashiach appointed leaders over the assemblies. So that's one of the aspects that the Christian church were doing right. It's just that they were doing it for the wrong reasons and then some of the people were taking advantage of that and bleeding the members to the point that now for those who came into the truth, you feel like as if you don't have to do that anymore. And it's wrong. Now I can't, we can't tell our members that, D, because they think it's a, you know, it's an agenda. I'm not the pastor. And they didn't tell me to tell you this. I'm gonna say what the law says. Right. You don't have a choice. If you say the law keepers, follow the law. Deuteronomy 16, verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Most High thy Yah in the place which he shall choose. Now was Jerusalem, go ahead. In the, fe in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's the Passover. In the Feast of Weeks. Which we're doing today. In the Feast of Tabernacles. So three times a year, these particular three feasts, we had to go to Jerusalem to keep it. Now there's aspects in the law where where they, there, there's provisions that if something kept you from being able to go there and you, you couldn't get there on time, you, you could send your money, you could send your offers and stuff like that. There were provisions, there were certain verses happening. But it was a commandment for them to go every year to keep this feast in Jerusalem. But this is the kicker. Verse 17. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. And they shall not appear before the Most High empty. And you shall not appear before the Most High empty. Verse 17. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Most High thy Yah, which he has given thee. So seven day arms, as the Most High has blessed you for the first quarter of this year, you must give unto your leaders. This is a commandment. There's not a particular uh, amount on it. You know what the Most High has done for you. 
You know how he blessed you. And it ain't gonna be those things that shake and rattle. Because the offerings went to the priest. Prophetess and Moray are your priests. New Testament precept to prove it. Galatians 6, verse 6 and 7. This is a commandment for this feast day to take care of your leaders. You choose not to do it, like some, it's on you. <laughs> but I would, like my father would say, I strongly suggest that you do it. Galatians 6, verse 6. We got a real quiet in here all of a sudden. <laughs> Let's not talk about money with that, but we'll get tight. Galatians 6, verse 6. Let him that is taught in the word and word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Y'all see that? <laughs> this is Paul saying, Those who are taught. You must communicate all good things to your teachers. You think this building, you think all this work, you think all that they're doing every week, you think this comes easy? Nope. It's the task. And trust, none of us want to do this. Okay. If we had a choice, we'd be somewhere right now doing something else. But we know if we don't do this work, there's going to be a problem. Absolutely. Verse 7. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Y'all is not mocked. See, so most people have been used to pull this scripture out of the chapter and thought this was talking about sin. No. This whole entire Galatians 6 is talking about giving. The start of the chapter is talking about giving grace to those who are in sin. Then it goes into Galatians 6. In verse 6, it's talking about so into those who are given unto you through the word. Read it again. Galatians 6 and 7 says what? Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Y'all is not lost. Uh -huh. For whatsoever a man soweth, that, sh that shall he also reap. Mm -hmm. But he that sowed to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. So when you're only giving things for your own good and going to benefit you, it will eventually bring corruption to you. Go ahead. But he that sowed to the spirit. And the word is spirit. Show of the spirit reap re life everlasting. Y'all see that? So, this is a commandment that comes along with this feast day. I would strongly suggest you make sure you take care of that. Now, <laughs> let's go to Acts for a chapter. Hey, Sue, we're going to open the door, man. I don't think we're going to make it out of here. This, <laughs> this, is, this is getting really, really tired here, guys. We went from laugh and smile, so I'm starting to see the, the gal on the table now. Don't play with my money. <laughs> no, I'm serious though, but you gotta understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that we're hustling backwards as a people. Yeah. We're saying that we want the things of the most high, but we won't do what the most high tells us to do in order to receive it. I know that we were in situations where things were done wrong and our hearts and our good intention was abused. We're the truth now. We're amongst family now, and we can't continue to bring and use the past as an excuse to not do what's right. You know, you, you'll never hear this from, you'll never hear this from prophetess, you never hear this from Moray, you're never gonna hear this from any leader in the set apart. But when we talk amongst ourselves, we sit back and just look at it like, yo, this is, this is crazy. But well, we know we got each other's back, so we're going to do what has to be done. And a lot of times, it be stuff that need to be done, they get taken care of, and y'all have no idea. Because they're not going to bring it to you. And it shouldn't have to get to that point. Because I'm telling you right now, as the days get darker, we're going to be all that we have. And if we can't rely on each other, That's if everybody's sitting around falling for this witchcraft or Yo, this person you're giving me, I can't shake his hand. I gotta be six feet apart. I'm telling you, that's for them. They ain't got nothing to do with us. That's right. We are all we got. That's right. That's it. That's the truth. And we gotta take care of each other. You 
take care of your leaders, it will trickle down and the most high will take care of you. You ain't hurting yourself by giving. You're hurting yourself not giving. That's right. Just wanted to put that out here. Now, ask the first chapter. Now, we're coming in. Post Christ now. You gotta understand. What does this feast of weeks mean to Hamasha? Watch this. Acts the first chapter. Acts 1, verse 1. The former treatise that have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Yeshua began both to do and to teach, mm -hmm. until the day in which he was taken up after after he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, right? To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days. Being seen of them what? Them forty days. Now, how many days from the time of the Passover does the Feast of Weeks begin? We just read that. 49 days, next day, piece of weeks. Huh? What day did Hamas shot down? What day was he sacrificing? Passover. According to Matthew 26, he says, two days of the Passover, I will be crucified. Break it down. Go to the Matthew 26 at the end, the cock crowed. Peter could die three times. Cock crowed, son come up. Hamas shot still alive. Passover started at what? Friday evening? Saturday, Saturday 3 o'clock-ish? He's still alive on the cross. He gives up the ghost. On the Passover. How long was he gone? Three days? Three nights? Three days? Plus the 40 after that is what? 43 days. Find that map out? Watch this. So he lived 40 days afterwards, after he came back, plus the three days that was in hell. So that's a total of 43 days. The sister just said 49 days, 50 days is the day of Pentecost. Watch this, verse four. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. He told them not do what? Not depart from Jerusalem. Did we just read in Deuteronomy 16? That during the Feast of Weeks, they had to be where? Jerusalem. <laughs> Y'all see this? How it's all coming along. Go ahead. But wait for the promise. So wait for what? But wait for the promise uh -huh. of the Father, which saith, He ye have heard of me. What was the promise? What did, he, what did Hamasha tell them in John 17 that was coming? The Holy Spirit. The law came on these weeks, and now we see that the rock came on the feast of weeks. Are you telling me this ain't important? Did you see how it gets so watered down by just saying, "Oh, it's the day of Pentecost"? It's so much. Watch this. Verse 6, for slide verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Not many days hence. Now, read verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Master, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So this whole time, they were believing that when Hamasha gave his life, that now we about to, hey, it's his own now. They forgot about the curses of Deuteronomy 28. We had to, we had to endure that. 
So they're saying, yo, you, you about to put us back on? What was your shy answer? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, right? But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. You shall be what? Witnesses unto the people of Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in all Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, look at this for a very important reason. You see here, Yeshua is saying that we will be a witness. What does the Christian church do? What do they do? They do something quite different. What do they do? They go and witness. If you're a witness, you don't have to go and witness. If I see a brother, right, and I see my aunt right there, and I see his shirt, and I like it, he's a witness that somebody made that shirt. So all I had to do was ask him, hey man, where you got that shirt at? He's a witness. But if he don't got the shirt on, and he come out and tell me, hey man, I know a guy that's making shirts. <laughs> come check it out, he's like, yo, what shirt at? No, I don't have it. But I know a guy that's making it. Well, that's what's going on with the Christian church. Because they don't look like a mashiach. They don't look like the Bible. They don't look like the blessing. But they got to go and tell you witness. When if their family was together, their family were together, the children were together, the, the community was together, they would be a witness. And the witness comes from the signs and wonders in which they were doing. When last time you went to church, you see somebody, somebody blind, eyes open. When the last time you see the dead, the dead raised. When the last time you see somebody go in a wheelchair, leave walking. And I ain't talking about these set up bending hands foolishness that you see on TV and in the day store. Right. It's about real deal. We have. Still going down. It's just that people are no longer witness. You gotta go and tell somebody about something you don't know versus being a witness. Because guess what happens? Let me put it like this right here. If you witness a car wreck or a crime, then you have to go and tell people you're a witness or do they not come and find you you get what they call what? A subpoena. To testify in court because you are a witness. But when you're not, you have to call the hotline. See the difference? Amasha is saying, if you do this and wait on this Holy Spirit, you will be a witness of me. And this is what happens. Now I go over to Acts the second chapter, start verse one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place. Now, do you understand now, ladies and gentlemen, how important it was to know everything that we we learned before that without just reading this verse? This is the danger of being in a religion that tells you to only read read part of the book. <laughs> you understand? Like nobody in the world does that of any other book but the Bible. Don't worry about two thirds of the book. Just read the last half. And then, but Revelations, you don't gotta worry about that too. Just read Mark, James, Luke, and John. We follow the Pauline scriptures. What is that? That's how you don't know what's going on when you don't read all the things that we talked about before that. Now you have no idea of what day this is. You don't know that this is a holy holy day. You don't know this is a law. You don't know this is a commandment. You don't know what is taking place here so it waters down the effect. For example, that, that so-called Leonardo da Vinci thing when they talk about the Last Supper. By calling what Yeshua was doing the Last Supper, 
you take away what was actually being done, which was what? The Passover. Because guess what happens? And this goes beyond them being white or black. If you look at a picture and it says, yeah, they was keeping the Passover there, and you say, well, why are we not keeping the Passover? But if you call it the Last Supper, everybody eats something. He completely watered down what was actually taking place the day he was crucified. He was not just gathering for some chicken and some, and some pinto beans, okay? They want a ham hock on the table and some butter beans, okay? <laughs> okay, they had a Passover lamb, they had some unleavened bread and some wine and some bitter herbs, and they was keeping the law. On the last supper, Matter of fact, he had many suppers after that, for 40 days. <laughs> they had a fish fry, they ain't about six days left. That's what you hear about that. Verse three, verse seven. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Right. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, here we go. So in the church, Christian church, everybody talk about the day of Pentecost, talk about speaking in other tongues. And most of it is bone shika, bone shika, bone Sound like God's effects up in there. But, is that what the Bible is talking about? The reason why this is important, ladies and gentlemen, why I want to go here today to make sure this is clear, because this was taking place on the Feast of Weeks. It's a bigger thing that's going to take place here. Has anybody ever heard the Tower of Babel? What happened at the Tower of Babel? Before Everybody was speaking one language. That language was Hebrew too, by the way. But when they went off and started doing things outside of the Most High, the Most High put down 70 angels, split their language into 70 different tongues, which brought about confusion and battle. Therefore, they could no longer work together as one unit. Now, we have here at this high holy day, the Most High, empowering them with the Holy Spirit, and now they have the ability now to speak a language that they couldn't speak before. For what reason? Verse five. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. These were Israelites that had been driven forth from Judea because of captivity, speaking other languages. No prize at this point, ladies and gentlemen, we've been through three captivities Babylon, Persia, and Greece. But we were everywhere. Verse 6. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Are y'all seeing that? So they weren't just talking something that couldn't be understood. What they was actually saying was in order for it to be understood. And because our brothers and sisters in the truth don't understand this, you got people saying that speaking in tongues is of the devil. They don't know that this is a gift so that if I'm in Ecuador, if I'm in China, I'm in Persia, I can be in South Bronx, wherever I can be at, and the gospel needs to go forth I have the ability to talk to them and give them the truth of the washout. Through complete 
the, the declaration of Isaiah 49 and 6, to restore the preserved of Israel and to raise up the child of Jacob. Because ladies and gentlemen, these same Israelites that are here on this holy day was there at the Passover. And you know what they were saying on the Passover? Give us Barabbas. Because they was hearing what they should do from the Pharisees versus the Ruach. But now, 50 days later, these same Israelites are back. And instead of the flesh talking, the Ruach is talking. And you go down to verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that Yah has made the same Messiah whom ye have crucified, both Master and Hamash. Are y'all seeing this? This came on the Feast of Weeks that they were able to receive their Lord and Savior, Yeshai Hamasha, on this day. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Uh-huh. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So that's why it's important for you to stand on this law and you to walk in truth you to walk in love and you to walk in obedience because what they're going to do when they see a Mashiach in you they're going to ask you that same question what shall we do but if you out here say hey man I can keep the feast day or not uh, you know I'm on a grace you making excuses you're teaching them to continue to stand on the, the, the excuses as well. And then you'll be able to tell them the first, same thing, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is why we celebrate Shabbat, the Feast of Weeks. Hallelujah. That makes sense? This is why we do this. This ain't no screen, flip the tables over message. <laughs> this is the fully understanding of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Because without this understanding, we're gonna to continue to find ourselves walking around that reverberal mountain. And how many of y'all ready to go into the kingdom? How many of y'all are tired of captivity? How many of y'all ready to go in? Hallelujah. Give them Isaiah 10 and 20. We're going to close out with this. There's so much more we can say, but I think that we understand where we're at. Bishop, uh, come off the top row tomorrow. You know it. <laughs> Especially what I got today. So that's it, Tim. We ended off with this. Isaiah 10 verse 1. Yeah, we're going to start. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. Right. And and their right grievances which they have prescribed. So he said, Woe unto them who decree an unrighteous decree. And given out what? And right what? Right, and right grievances which have, have prescribed. So ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm starting here because I want you to know clearly. There's a lot of people that's going to be talking to you as if they have your best interest at heart, and they don't. I want you to I want you to be mindful of three very important things. Number one, a person that talks about themselves in the third person. Okay, you don't understand why I do why I'm looking to do this. 
the vapor though. Be very, very mindful of people who talk about yourself in the third person. That is the number one sign of a narcissist. Number two, be very mindful of a person who telling you you don't need an elder or a leader, but always telling you to listen to them. And number three, and very important, if anybody tells you something in the Bible and, and end it with a but, <laughs> run as fast as you can. Yeah, I know the Bible says you have to be baptized, but, but I know that Saturday is Shabbat, but, but I know they said I can't eat that, but, I know we're supposed to be doing this, but, run as fast as you can. We're talking to the devil. Because the devil's the only one that comes up with alternatives to what the most I said. Remember when he was talking to him? And he said, hey, the most I said if we do that, we're gonna die. He said, you ain't gonna show to die. But, talking to the devil. Now, verse two. To turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. That's the whole point of it. They're trying to do whatever they can do to get something out of you. The words must edify, not tear down. And sisters, I'm talking specifically to you. Because a lot of you sisters, I hear you don't have a covering and you try to find your way, if a man has to tear you down, he is not the man for you. Spread up. It should only build you. It should only pour to you. If he's always drinking from your cup, if he has to take notches about you, if you have to change every aspect about your life to know him and be around him, you're talking to the devil. Don't let loneliness put you in hell. Verse three. And what will ye do in the day of visitation, in the, des in, in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will ye flee for help? And where will ye leave your glory? He said, listen, when I come for you, what are you gonna do? Because the Most High is going to come for you, whether to bless you or to punish you, but knowing that He's coming for you. They come from mercy and wrath, come the same individual. Now, lastly, down to verse 20. It shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon them that smote them, but shall stay upon the Most High, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. Y'all see that? And we're in that day, and then we're beginning to be delivered from those who smote us, to those who drunk put, put us into captivity, but we're escaping by standing on what? Truth. Psalms 119 verse 142 says, Thy law is truth. John 14 and 6 says, Amasha is the way, the truth, and the life. John 16 says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of what? Truth. So these are the three factors that you must be standing on at all times. The law, the ruach, and hamasha. It is the only way you're going to escape. And if we escape, we will become what? Verse 21. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. That's how you make it. You must practice the righteous acts now. Don't be playing catch up. Make yourself do it now 
And eventually it's going to come apart from life. It's going to come natural to you. Notice the process where you got to get these things out of your system. But it's okay. Trust me. It's going to pay off after a while. <laughs> after a while. Boy, I wish I had that. I wish I had that voice like, bro, I'll go in right now. <laughs> after a while. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get the most high round of applause. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so happy that we survived. We wasn't assassinated here today. I was a little nervous. Thank God for grace. Is there any questions, concerns? Yes, ma'am. Jubilee is the sixth chapter. It says that, I want to go there right quick. Let's go to Jubilee 6. We follow, uh, matter of fact, let's go to Jubilee 2. That's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. <clears throat> let's go to Jubilee 2 right quick. Um, for those who know me, you know, the whole set apart assembly. One thing that I love about us is that we're not a stickler for the, we're not, we're not, with how you shy said, uh, strain in a neck. You know, my aunt defend, has defended his relationship with me quite often. That dude up there saying a hi. Said, man, that's my brother, that's why. He be more bad about it than me. I be telling him like, man, they ain't, you know, they ain't never gonna break down this thing. Man, Anthony and Prophets go back, like I said, we go back before the truth. We know where the most I found us at. So this thing is bigger than what we're talking about. This is, listen, man, it's, you know. Uh, so, when I say that, I say this, is that the other day says the higher. Seven day harvest, most of the rest of y'all say you who? We know who we're talking to. Some of our feast days and, and things are, are not aligned. We know who we're talking to. So, those things right now, the Bible says in Jeremiah 3, that he says as he comes back, he's gonna give a word a pure language, he's gonna return it back to fully on one accord. Mm -hmm. sure. So there's some things that we do that may not be lined up with others, but I only I'm not gonna be talking about that when I'm with my family. When I'm with my family, we're talking about what we agree on. Most high. Hamasha <laughs> XK. Lost at your commandments. Holy days. So we don't we don't go into that. We believe that these discussions are supposed to be held with their hopes. So me and Anthony, we've been talking about that for a while. Anthony, Myron, shout out to the Hebrew Harris, Miss Karen. We've been talking about shout out to uh, Restoration Center. Uh, we've been talking about the elders sitting down and having a conversation that allowed us to have one feast day, because most of us celebrate feast days together anyway. New moves and stuff together anyway. But what we're trying to get to is that all of our days are aligned. All of our feast days and new moves are aligned. And we just let the most high had the last set. So we're working towards that. But in the meantime, until there's a full agreement, that will not get in the way of fellowship. No. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Hallelujah. And after the, the, the conversation, we're still gonna be fellowship. This this ship ain't gonna sail here. Right. But what I tell you, what you won't see, you won't see set apart assemblies in none of these public debates where that message y'all seeing going on right there ain't happening. We don't do that. That's for them to argue back and forth, see who the smartest person in the room is. It's only one smart person. His name was Hamasha. That's it. I don't know nothing. I just know him. That's it. 
Let's answer your question. Let's go to Jewel Weeks 2. And yeah, Jewel Weeks 2, verse 8. And on the fourth day, he created the sun and the moon and the stars. So the fourth day of creation, created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Go ahead. And set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon all the earth. And right. To rule over the day and the night, and divide the light from the darkness. Mm -hmm. And y'all appointed the sun to be a great sun on the earth for days and for seven. For what? For days and for, for seven. For Sabbaths? For months. For new moons. For a feast. For feast. For years. Uh huh. That's Jubilees. And for seven for years. Uh huh. And for Jubilees and for all seasons of the years. Now, most Israelites, what did they follow? The moon. Most I told us to follow the sun. That's a problem. So that's the reason why a lot of Israelites days off. It's because they're following the moon. This is the reason why you see. Israelites, this year in March, they got Passover. The next year, their Passover was in April. No different than Easter. Because they're following the moon. The Bible tells us to follow, Jubilee tells us to follow the sun, not the moon. So that's what our calendar is based off of. This, the book of Enoch, and let's go to chapter 6. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing to me that people say that the imposters are imposters, but you see it's like celebrating their feast days the same day they do. That's confusing to me. I can't get nothing from you if I know you're a liar. But that's what we want. And it's okay. We all learn. Jubilee 6. And before we go first. Okay, verse. Let's start at verse 32 then. And command thou the children of <coughs> the children of Israel that they should observe the years according to this reckoning. 364 days. 364 days. Which equates to what? 52 Sabbaths. 52 weeks, 52 Sabbaths, 364 days. Now we know Daniel, the 10th chapter, told us that the enemy would come and do what? Change the calendar. Try to tell you signs and times. That's why he did that, to throw this off. So he said, how are you doing that if you're saying 365 on the calendar? We're going 364. Keep going. And these will constitute a complete year, and they should they will not disturb his time from its days and from his feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. You see that? So that's how we know when the new year is. When New Year starts, 14 days later, it's the Passover. Never changes. We don't, it, it never, we never, it's never gonna be, we don't know what day the Passover is. I can tell you right now, I look at the calendar, I can tell you what day the Passover is next year. We tell you what day the Passover is next year. Because we follow this. And we'll count 364 as people in that. Over and over. Yeah. But you can only do that if you're starting from the sun initially. If, you, if you're, if, let me explain. Verse 33. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then will they disturb all their seasons, mm -hmm. and the years will be dislodged from this order. Mm -hmm. And they will disturb the seasons, and the years will be dislodged, and they will neglect their ordinances. And all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of years, and will forget the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths, and they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. See that? That's what happened. Because once we came in captivity, we wasn't keeping this no more. And unfortunately, those who woke up, went to the Gentiles, AKA the synagogues of Satan, 
and start applying what they were doing versus what you believe said. That's the problem. It's an unfortunate issue, but that's what's going on. Right? Because the Jewish people, along with others, follow the moon. And we were never supposed to follow the moon in anything. So in order, in order for it to be right, you got to reset it right from the beginning. So why are the new moons observed if you never told them? New moons and the new moons are, well, I wish you would have learned to see that lesson that we did, but let me give it to you no, real I'm quick. Not saying, I'm not saying exclusively follow the moon, I'm saying the sun and the moon. See, the new moon is not mean the new moon, it means the new moon. It's talked about as seasons. Okay. So when the spring comes, the moon. Summer comes, the moon. Fall comes, the moon. When it comes, the moon. It's actually one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so, and we're going to break that down on the field. We're doing our second new moon service. We'll be down in Fort Oak. And we're going to have a special guest that y'all all know and love. Love is going to be in the building. So, we're back. Yeah. yeah, so come out and join. We always, on the new moons, we always break it down and teach so you understand because. In the same way the Feast of Weeks goes back to Noah, the new moons go back to Noah as well. Each moon, each new moon represents a particular time frame in which he was on the ark. The first new moon, he went on the ark. The last new moon came off it. So it's, it's all, it's his. Jubilees is a very, very important book. And, it, and people overlook it quite too often. And because of this, this is what happens. Verse 36. But well, there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon. They will make observations of the moon. Go ahead. Now it disturbed the seasons and covered the end from year to year, 10 days, two seasons. So what happens is, what happens is one year, it will come in 10 days early, next time it come in 10 days late. This is the reason why they follow those who are following the spring solstice. You see in the Christian church, Easter will be in March one year, mm -hmm. the next year to be in April. Yeah. And unfortunately, you're seeing Israelites doing the exact same thing because they're following the moon. Our Passover is always the third week of March every year. It never changes. We've been doing the Passover for this, like what, like 2015? It's the same time every year because we follow this, follow the sun versus the moon. But it's all a learning process. We, listen, we in captivity. <laughs> we all learning. We can't, listen, we're not gonna learn everything. We're not gonna know everything until the king comes back. So, yes ma'am. I, I, I think this is something that could be discussed between the, um, you know, the mores and the elders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is something that, it can be cleared up if people really are want to, want to be on one accord. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because, as you just read in Acts chapter 2, that on this day mm -hmm. in Pentecost, they were in one accord. That's right. In one place. There was no confusion. Right. And Shavuot should be kept with, with a bunch of confusion. That's right. So we need to work it out and, and, and learn how to come on one accord. That's right. Because I don't think we have to wait to the by and by to be on one accord. I'm right. not sure we don't. We let, we let the Spirit guide us. He will bring us That's right. Us I definitely agree. Yeah. I definitely agree, but see, we, we also, at the same time, like I said, we have to be patient. Yes. We have to meet each other where they are. And listen, we don't have time to be focusing on differences. That's right. Okay. Because when you focus on differences, you overlook all of the beautiful things that you have in common. And this is why you got brothers and sisters arguing back and forth on social media. We celebrated Shabbat last week. You think it's gonna keep you not coming up and celebrate my brothers and sisters? But I know it's like some wooden air came today. <laughs> but in the building. And just like you said, like sister said, we sit down amongst the elders, we can have this discussion and get on one accord. Just like you said, they was in there on one accord. Nobody wanted, they knew they was there to keep the feast of weeks. They won't know 
Oh man, what day is it supposed to be? Uh, who supposed to be? No, it wasn't really talk about. They've been doing their entire lives, but for us, we're in captivity, so we're we're learning. So we gotta be patient with each other. We gotta trust the Most High. And as the Most High gives these opportunities for us to grow, we come on accord and we do it. But I'm gonna tell you right now, and I know y'all all agree. Hey, I I don't need you. To, I don't need you to, be, to think like me. I need you to think with me. <laughs> you understand? And we're gonna we're gonna do this thing together. And we're going to trust the Most High, and as he, he gives us understanding, we'll build upon it. Yes, yeah. Huh? Hallelujah. So that's what it is. So that's why we do what we do. But I ain't mad at my brother and sister. You honor the Most High the way you know how to do it where you at. Just keep learning. Keep growing. Keep seeking. He said, knock, and the door shall be open. Seek it, you shall find That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any other questions? What about my people's back there? I, I, I know how y'all get down. I see snow pads. <laughs> <laughs> when I hear 85 or not. <laughs> what y'all got? What you got, Lisa? Good? Lisa? What you got? <laughs> y'all know I'm telling you right now, I'm asking some calls right now. I'm just taking right <laughs> That's my family back there, though. Love the death. Love the life. All praise. All praise. So we're going to turn this back over to um, 70 hours. Uh, we're going to ask you guys to, um, matter of fact, let's lift up our hands to heaven. Let's make a declaration to heaven today. Say, Abba. Abba. I love you. I love you. But I thank you. I thank you. That you first loved me. That you first loved me. I understand. I understand. That I have failed you. That I have failed you. I understand. I understand. That there's more for me to do. That's more for me to do. This one thing. This one thing. That I do understand. That I do understand. That I am nothing. That I am nothing. Without you. Without you. But through you. But through you. And with you. And with you. All things are possible. All things are possible. Continue to open my eyes. Continue to open my eyes. Continue to show me the way. Continue to show me the way. And I promise. And I promise. With everything that is in me. With everything that is in me. That I will walk. That I will walk. And I will talk. And I will talk. And I will be your light. And I will be a light. Upon this dark earth. Upon this dark earth. I trust. You. I trust you. I love you. I love you. I honor you. I honor you. I adore you. I adore you. And I know. And I know that I am the apple. That I am the apple of your eye. Of your eye. So regardless. So regardless of what the world may say. Of the world may say. I am. I am your son. Your son. Your daughter. Your daughter. And in you. And in you. I live. I live. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
What did I do? Right there. I am a praiser. Right I started praising y'all all over. I just started praising y'all. That's it. And yeah. people were driving by like, what is going on? I, was, I just started praising y'all. Because the first thing I thought about was my granddaughter is in his car. That's it. That's it. Could truck could have flipped anything. But y'all. But y'all. But y'all. But y'all. But y'all. But what? He kept us. Then I hear that someone else got attacked. Someone else um, got attacked where the enemy tried to put them in jail. Then Sister Terry got hit. Car hit her and ran. Hallelujah. Then something happened with Sister Lorraine. And I'm like, devil, you a liar. That's it. Then my husband gets sick, had to rush him to the hospital last night. I was like, uh-uh. Devil, you are a liar. You will not come up in here and disturb this atmosphere. This place belongs to y'all. Y'all gave us this place. That's it. To be a help to our, our assembly, to our families. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To our community. Yeah. And you going to come up in here and do this this morning. That's why I was like, thank you, bro. The enemy is trying us, y'all. We got to come together as a community and build together as Damn. a community. Because guess what? We're stronger together than we are apart. Yes, we are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let, let, let's pray for one another and be here for one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to do this together. Hallelujah. So we praise y'all again for our brother for coming and blessing us on today with that awesome word. Let's just give y'all another hand for him. Hallelujah. And we're going to ask him to bless our food and as we um, proceed on. And we're going to go on into the, um, for the food. And um, it was another announcement I needed to make and I don't forgot what it was. But anyway, I'll make it. Tomorrow. Service tomorrow? Yes. Bishop will be um, speaking on tomorrow uh, at 12. Time? 12. 12 tomorrow, yes. At 12 o'clock tomorrow. Um, can you come and make the announcement? <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah. Jeremiah, you know, you know. Moshe, <laughs> hallelujah. And then we're gonna have uh, more reason. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, uh, yeah, tomorrow uh, we'll be uh, celebrating Shabbat. Oh, did I say it right? <laughs> we'll be celebrating. I, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty new at this. About, about I think three years in, but uh, I, I, I'm humbled and honored to uh, be used by the Most High uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow at 12 o'clock, uh, we will be having service and we'll be celebrating. And I just want to say that I, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been studying on it. You know, uh, but what I got today really just blessed me and helped me. And I'm, I'm going to meditate on it all night. Hallelujah. <laughs> so he can just let me carry on what he started today because it's just profound. And uh, I, 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 love the, I love those books, Jubilee and Enoch. And, and uh, I'm not going to get into a whole big thing about it. But tomorrow we're going to come back out. But we want to keep our more in prayer. Uh, he, he's just a man that won't stop, you know. I, I, I say he won't listen to his wife, he won't listen to the business, he won't listen to his mores. But he's, he's just doing what he feels he has to do for the most high. Keep him in prayer, and uh, we'll see y'all uh, uh, y'all below tomorrow. Yeah. Well, well, well. If all parts of mind is clear, let the church Amen. Amen. Our praise from most high higher for another wonderful day today. I thank you guys for being with us. Man, it's just beautiful. I want you guys to know that I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Shouts out to Sound Council. Shouts out to my day one the building. I just thank you each, each and every one of you for being here today. And um, Seven Day Harvest, man, I really, really, truly appreciate you guys. Um, it's nothing like 
you guys the love um, that is in this building. Uh, you guys are a reflection of the Most High, but uh, you definitely are a reflection of your leaders. Um, you see it all over you. You see it in what you guys do, how you take care of each morning. Take care of each other. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, shouts out to the Kelly sisters who has taken me on. You know, I got to say it one time for sis. Attitude check. <laughs> Bronco Bronco Pride. Pride. But uh, just continue to do what you do and follow you up. And uh, let the most high use you. Because that praise, ladies and gentlemen, is what tore down the walls of Jericho. And our praise is what's going to tear down the walls of Babylon. Remember, the sins of Israel is what's fueling this country. The repentance of Israel is what brings this kingdom down. That's it. That's it. You understand? That's it. Your awakening, your commitment to the Most High, is the real pandemic. <laughs> That's it. You are the pandemic. They just don't want to say it. Israel, you are the virus. I'm sorry, Clorox, mass, <laughs> Java juice, <laughs> none of it. It's gonna stop where the most high has. That's right. Straight up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you first and foremost for everything you have done. We thank you so much for your continued love, your grace, and your mercy. Uh, but we thank you for bringing us to here today to gather in the midst of the Shabbat. We ask you, Abba, to, to carry us back into our respective places. We thank you that all is well for those who came near and far. And we thank you, Abba, that you will guide them back into their destinations. Abba, we lift it to my brother, Maury of his home, Anthony Douglas, and we pray right now in the person of Yeshua that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. I speak from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And I cast all infirmities that are not of you back into the place of hell. Yeah. I speak upon him restoration and complete healing in the precious name of Yeshua. He said in your, in your word, I put that by your by Yeshua's stripes, he will heal. And so we declare his healing, we declare his clarity, we declare his clearness and sight in the precious name of Yeshua. We call it forth right now. And we say it is so. It is so. Uh, we ask a special blessing upon Bishop tomorrow. We pray that you empower him with your ruach, with your insight, that he may be used for your glory. We pray that your ruach moves mightily throughout this building and moves mightily throughout this community and continue to cancel darkness and bring that marvelous light that sits upon the hill. Father, uh, we say a special prayer for all the children here today. We pray that they continue to grow and be the, the children that you called them to be. We speak against everything that is not of you. We cast all the enemy upon them, and we just call them forth to be the sons and the daughters in which you called them to be. We ask you all to bless those who watch them via social media. We ask you to move mildly throughout the airways. We ask you to knock down the walls of, of disappointment, knock down the walls of pain, knock down the walls of church hurt, knock down the walls of, 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 of sin and, 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 and self-guilt and depression. And we pray, Abba, that they would hear your voice and not ours, that they would see your son and not us, and that they would receive the marvelous gift of salvation upon their lives. We ask you, Abba, to bless the food, to bless the resources that provide the food. We ask you to bless the preparers of the food, allow it to be nourished to, to our body. And it's in the pressure of Yeshua, and Masha, that we do pray that the redeemed say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rakadak, Om Yashurala. Shalom. Shalom. Oh, my God.